Hey there, and welcome to Wednesday, otherwise known as Hump Day. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's Hump Day. Uh, and this is Victory's virtual workshop, creating confidence and clarity for your financial life. So I have a client who's 62, and I'll call him Ron. And he's worried about the future of Social Security. And he wonders if he should be taking his benefits early, like now, to lock them in. You see, the Social Security Trust Fund recently re uh, reported and they raised some questions uh, that several of my clients in their 60s came to me with. They worry that the program is going to run out of money and they won't be able to claim benefits. Well, what the trustee said is actually no different than the report from last year, uh, that without systemic changes to the programs, and there are a variety of programs within the wrapper of Social Security, that the fund will be depleted in 2033. Now, once the reserves are depleted, payroll taxes will continue to cover about 79% of Social Security expenditures, which is actually up a bit from last year's estimate of 77%. Yippee. So let's take a look at some of the ins and outs of Social Security, and I'll come back to Ron's story in a minute. So as you probably know Social Security is the cornerstone or a cornerstone of retirement planning for many Americans, but deciding when to start taking benefits is a relatively complex decision, uh, certainly with long-lasting implications. To give you a better understanding, let's break down the key factors to consider here. First, we'll talk about the basics. Uh, so obviously you can start taking Social Security benefits as early as age 62, um, but you may realize doing so will reduce your monthly benefit amount. Your full retirement age, or FRA, uh, which is around 66 or 67, depending on when you were born, is when you're eligible to receive your full benefit. And if you delay taking benefits past your FRA, your monthly benefit increases again up until age 70. So the question is, should you take benefits early, 62, at your FRA, full retirement age, or delay them further uh, up until age 70. Here are some factors that you should consider. Number one is life expectancy. Social Security is designed to pay out the same total amount regardless of when you start taking it, assuming you live to an average life expectancy. So if you expect to live longer than the average, delaying benefits could result in higher lifetime payouts. And conversely, if you have health issues or a shorter life expectancy, taking benefits earlier might make more sense. But the obvious issue here is most people, unless they have serious health issues, have no idea what their life expectancy is going to be. Number two, financial needs. Your current financial situation plays a big role. If you need the income to cover ex essential expenses and you don't have enough savings or other income sources, taking the benefits early might be not only necessary, but your only option. On the other hand, if you've got sufficient retirement savings and you can afford to wait, delaying benefits could be beneficial. And that could somewhat depends on how you're investing um, those funds, how conservative you expect to be with them. And that will help you decide uh, on whether or not uh, you should delay. Number three, employment status. If you plan to keep working past 62 while still filing for Social Security, it's important to know that taking your Social Security before your FRA can lead to reduction in benefits if your earnings exceed certain limits. So once you reach your FRA, no holds barred, you can work without any reduction in your benefits. Number four, spousal benefits. Think of your spouse. If you're married, you'll want to consider how your decision impacts your spouse. It may make sense to wait and maximize the amount of Social Security so that the spouse can inherit the higher benefit in case of death. Number five, inflation and cost of living adjustments. Social Security benefits are adjusted for inflation, but the increases are based on the initial amount you start with. So starting with a higher benefit by delaying 
can mean larger dollar value increases over time. So let's recap that with a, a quick pro-con list. Taking benefits early at age 62. The pros are you get immediate income, which is beneficial if you have a shorter life expectancy, and it's useful if you need the funds immediately. You don't have sufficient outside assets to cover cash flow while you wait. This may be your best and only option other than to continue to work. But that's no fun. The cons of taking benefits early is the permanent reduction in monthly benefits now and forever. All right, pros and cons of taking benefits at FRA, full retirement age. Pro number one, you get the full benefit amount. You get your full retirement amount. Okay, there's no reduction for working if you continue to do so. And it takes a balanced approach to the unsurety about life expectancy. You're kind of kind of going with the middle option here. The cons of taking it at full retirement age is you do miss out on increased benefits from delaying to the tune of uh, 6% per year. And that might not be as beneficial if you have a longer life expectancy. Delaying benefits up to 70, here are the pros. Increased monthly benefits, duh. Now 8% higher per year for delaying between full retirement age up to age 70. Uh, that means higher lifetime benefits if you live longer and larger inflation inflation adjustments in dollar terms, not in percentage. Everybody gets the same percentage, but if you start with a higher base, the dollar values are higher. What are the cons to waiting till age 70? Well, you need to have other income sources to cover expenses, and there's a risk of not living long enough to benefit from the delay. Again, how would you know in advance? So ultimately, the decision on when to take Social Security benefits is personal and depends on your unique circumstances. So consulting with a financial advisor can help you tailor the decision to your specific situation. Hey, how about that? Now, remember, there's no one-size-fits-all answer, but with the right information, you can make a decision that best supports your retirement goals. So let's go back to my client, Ron. And let's walk through and see how his decision-making pro uh, progressed with the help of this month's checklist. All right, first we reviewed his history and there were no general issues with his work history. Um, there were no issues with his benefits reporting or the credits he earned. He was in good standing with social security, ready to go whenever he was ready for it. Uh, but he certainly had questions on delaying. And we'll talk more about those in a second. Ron was not going to be working, but he did need to coordinate his spousal uh, claiming strategy with his spouse, Rhonda. As for the rest of the checklist... As for the rest of the checklist, nothing else really applied. Okay, so no ex-spouse issues, no state-specific issues. Um, and we had already done his tax uh, planning, so we were ready for what was coming with Social Security as an income source. Okay, so relatively straightforward for him. So what do I tell someone who should delay based on all the metrics, but thinks they should take benefits early to lock them in before the system runs out of money? Okay. When we look at the checklist, really the only issues that Ron had are, should I take it early? How do I get the most to my spouse? He's got outside assets and he can delay. He's in decent health. And in this case, he should delay his social security, okay? But he thinks the system's gonna run out of money based on what's been uh, appearing in the media lately. Well, first, let me say that most experts believe that this won't happen. I know experts, but bear with me. What they believe is that the political will to reform the system is going to materialize once it isn't a down the road problem, 
but the one that could pop up in current terms for politicians trying to get reelected. And speaking of reelection, remember that one of the largest lobbying organizations in America is the AARP. And guess what? Older people don't like having this stuff tinkered with. Okay, so food for thought. Even if it does come about that they never reform Social Security and the trustee fund runs out, as we discussed, payroll taxes will continue to fund 79% of the benefits. Now, in Ron's case, 21% cut in benefits would not be fun, like at all. But I'd rather take a haircut on more money than less money. What we know is he'll hit 70 well before 2034 rolls around. So I'm counseling him to wait for that bigger benefit, which Rhonda will take over when he passes. Remember, we're trying to think about maximizing money for the spouse as well. well what if they change the program drastically before then? Wouldn't it be better to lock in those benefits now? Maybe. But what I'll tell you is that Congress would have to show one an inkling that there is a problem, and two, the political will to work in a bipartisan manner to make such changes. Now, until either one of those unicorns appears, my advice is to wait and grab a bigger benefit that ultimately might be reduced, but probably not. Remember that being on glide path for and in retirement starts with a, a smart approach. Making sure your sources of income, S, medical and healthcare, M, advanced planning, A, risk management, R, and tax efficient strategies, T, all work together. That's the smart approach. So if you want a copy of this week's checklist or need to ask questions about Social Security or any other topic in my Smart Approach to Retirement series, just email me at Patrick at victoryindependentplanning.com. That's it for next week. Thanks for checking in, and I'll see you next week.